this video, I'll be working through question three of the level three of 2018 electricity exam. Question three. What do we got? Um, Casey or Casey is experimenting with building inductors and capacitors. To make a capacitor, um, places a, l a thin layer of rubber between two 1.2 meter squared aluminium plates. Squeeze the sheets together. The rubber has a dielectric constant of 8.9, compressed to thickness of very, very small 1.2. Well, 1 times 10 to the 4, um, so 0.1 of a millimetre. Show that the capacitance of Casey's, Casey's capacitor is that. This is a show question, so you need to write the formula. Um, so the capacitance is equal to epsilon naught times the rel uh, relative permittivity of free space times a dielectric constant times the area divided by the separation distance in any order. I think the formula sheet might have them backwards, but whatever. Um, and that is equal to, what have we got, 8.85, can't remember this, times 10 to the negative 12, yes I can, um, times 8.9 times, what's the area, 1.2, no fishy business, yeah, nah, no fishy business, um, and divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 4 meters, and that is going to be equal to, oh it is, nor is it, we'll just go 9.45 times 10 to the negative 7 um, farads. If you do it in the calculator, it's like 0 0.000000, a whole lot of zeros, and then 945. Um, there we go, 3 SF, just because that's 3, that's 3, that's 3, it's level 3, they will give it in 3. Radio. Um, to make an inductor, Casey or Casey, won several hundred terms of insulated copper wire around an iron rod. Casey wants to test, Casey wants to test this inductance. Connects the circuit below. The voltage across the lamp is 4.64 volts RMS. The voltage across the inductor is 11.1 volts RMS. Show that the inductance of the inductor is 3.81 times 10 to negative. negative to Henry's. Right, this is kind of a question where you don't really know where to start, so what you should do is just find everything you can. Um, we should really find the current through just the circuit, um, and we'll do that from here. Here we've got the voltage, you've got the resistance, um, so we'll do that now. So the current, RMS, everything's an RMS, root mean square, it's just like the average current, because it's an alternating circuit, so the average is technically zero, so, yeah, because half is positive, half is negative. Um, but it's kind of like the average, let's just pretend it is. Um, is equal to the voltage, RMS, divided by the resistance, not RMS, because there's no such thing as RMS resistance, it's just 4.64. I'm trying to find the current through that, and if the current through that, well, obviously it's going to be the same through, through there, it's just kind of like DC as well. Um, 5, and that is going to give me, what is it going to give me? 0 0.93 amps. Hey, look at that. So, 0 0.93 amps goes through here, which means, uh, what have we got? I is equal to 0 0.93 amps through there. Um, how is that going to help us? We will find the reactance of this inductor. It's kind of like the fancy resistance. Well, the impedance is a fancy resistance. But the reactance is the essentially the resistance of uh, of that inductor. And it's actually fairly simple to calculate. XL is equal to VRMS divided by IRMS. If you have one RMS and one peak to peak, you're going to have a bad time. Um, they're both going to be, if you just, if it's volt, you know, voltage peak to peak and current peak to peak, that's fine. Um, in your formula sheet, that's written as something max, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I max and V max is root two times the uh, RMS current, the RMS voltage. That's the scholarship formula sheet, but you get the drift. Um, and that is going to be equal to 11.1 divided by 0 0.93, and that's going to be bigger than 11.1. That is going to be. 11.93 ohms. Ooh, ooh, it's getting kind of easy now. All right, in your formula sheet, you have the reactance of the inductor is equal to the angular frequency times the uh, inductance, which is going to be equal to 2 pi f times L. In other words, 
L is equal to reactants divided by 2 pi F, which is frequency 50. Oh, which means, um, what have we got? 11.93 divided by 2 pi times 50, and that just so happens to be 3.8, I hope you guys can see that, 3.81 times 10 to the negative 2 henrys. And we didn't even need the space up there. I hate when exams have a bit of space there and a bit of space there because you always never use this space, but whatever. Um, and we showed, so you would have had, you have to have formulas. If there's a show question, you can't just like work your way through the numbers. You've got to have formula, formula, working, working, formula, formula, working, working. Equation, rearrangement, working, uh, yeah, working, and then answer. Otherwise, you don't get the points. Um, annoying, I know, but whatever. Right. What are we done now? We are going to add a 9.45 times 10 to the uh, 945 nanofarad, I don't know why they've got a uh, capacitor to create an LCR circuit. The light bulb barely glows, KC or KC switches the AC power supply to its maximum frequency of 400 hertz. It's 4 times 2 to the 10, so I'll just write 400. Determine the new impedance of the circuits. Impedance is Z, um, and this is something you have to memorize. Or you can be sneaky and write it on your hand. I don't know. Um, it's pretty easy to remember. R squared. Oh, it's a square root of R squared plus. Now, this doesn't matter. XL minus XC. It could be the other way around. It doesn't matter because it's just the difference between your reactances of the capacitor and the uh, inductor um, squared. I'm not going to draw a phasor diagram. Because I don't think I need to. It says in the answer schedule you could, but I don't think you need to at all. Um, so we are going to find the new impedance because we have new frequencies for everything. It's just going to get kind of tricky. Um, XC, so the uh, reactance of the capacitor, is equal to 1 over the angular frequency times C, which is going to give me 1 over... Do we have to show anything? No, there's no shows. Ah, oh, screw it. I'll do the working anyway. 2 pi times 400 times, what do we got? Uh, 9.45, change the negative 7, uh, is equal to, what do we got? What is it equal to? 421.04 ohms, and our XL is going to be equal to, what is XL? That's just a mega L, isn't it? A mega L, which is equal to 2 pi F times L, which is equal to, uh, 2 pi times 400. Kids would get stuffed up with this. Most kids, I reckon, that would have made mistakes, would have used 50 hertz. Um, I didn't mark it, so I wouldn't know, but that would be my guess. Times, what's the new one? What is the inductance? Oh, we calculated it. 3.81 times 10 to the negative 2. Um, and that equals... So L equals... What does that equal? Um... 95.72 ohms. Um, and now it's simply just plug and chug. Z is going to be equal to the impedance. It's going to be equal to square root 5, bracket, bracket, squared, plus bracket um, 95.72. Don't round. Don't round until you get to the end for people that do round. Please don't. Pull the square root all the way across. What's XC? 421. 1.04 bracket squared. And if you do that in your calculator, that gives you 325. 5 ohms. Sweet. Um, radio. Calculate the resonant frequency of the circuit and compare this with the maximum frequency of the power supply. Easy peasy, it's on your formula sheet, F0 is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root LC, which is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi square root uh, 9.45, ah, oh, then the capacitance first, ah, who cares, times 10 to the negative 7, oops, times... That's your inductance. 3.81, isn't it? 3.81 times 10 to the negative 2 
to just drag that all the way across and drag that one over the course. Man, that is messy. Um, and that is equal to 838.77 hertz. I'm not going to bother rounding. That should be a Z, not a 2. Um, and compare this with the maximum frequency of the setting of the power supply. Man, that's stupid. If you didn't compare this, I reckon they wouldn't give you the mark. Whatever, it's level 3. It's meant to stop people that can't do English and math good. Um, I don't know. Right, this is more. This is more than double. Because it's originally 400. The current. No, wait. Current, yeah, current, whatever. I'm, current frequency. Frequency of 400 hertz. 400, obviously, because it's 838. Right. Describe how Casey or Casey could physically alter the inductor and capacitor to increase the, both the current and the light bulb and using this power supply. So I'll pause, write the answer, and then just go. Right, so I said both the inductance and capacitance need to increase to create resonance. Basically, you need to increase the denominator so it decreases the number on the outside. Um, so you need to add more coils to the inductor or increase the plate area on the capacitor or do both. Um, you could also like change up what's inside the inductor. So you could like make it out of better iron, more pure iron, but I assume they used iron to begin with. Um, yeah, making inductors is a bit of a hocus pocus endeavor. Um, capacitor, however, you could either increase the plate area, you could add a better dielectric, um, you could decrease the plate separation, um, and that's really about it. I've said increase area, right. 